Sorry, I'm still setting up, uh, getting ready to do a mic check here really quick. Bit of a change in some of the gear, so uh, check, 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 check. One, two, one, two. Uh, seriously not hearing. This is awkward. Oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> This is why I have to keep doing sound tests. Okay, great. Thank you, Steven. Okay. <coughs> oh, sorry about the coughing and some of the background noise. Yeah, this is a uh, new sound system that I'm trying to, to work with and see how well this is going to work. So yeah, this is Heather Van Wild with Raindrop Works, uh, coming to you live from downtown Portland. This is the scene where every night for most of the last about 55 days, there has been massive protests uh, against first the Portland Police Bureau and now the uh, federal government that has been sent in to basically quell the uprising. Um, I was having to come downtown for something different, and I thought while I was here, I might as well take a look around and kind of give an idea of how things look during the day when the streets are not filled with tear gas. That being said, um, as far as I know, the Fed stopped firing off tear gas probably like six hours ago. And I am still, when I don't have my mask on, I'm still having to cough periodically because of how much residual gas is in the area. And as you can probably see, there is definitely a, uh, a homeless population that is set up here, a little bit of a tent city. I don't have a problem with that, but I do worry that they're being stuck out here in a situation where yeah, you know, we are in the middle of a pandemic, <clears throat> and, <clears throat> you know, if I'm coughing, and I know I'm healthy, you know, it, this, this gives me cause for concern, and, and this is one of the reasons why, when Don't Shoot PDX had their initial lawsuit against the city, it was, among other things, specifically because of concerns about COVID. So, you can see here, and just ahead of the camera, one of the big things that has cropped up and has become a central, um, a central community point with the protest is, um, it, it's called Riot Ribs. It was originally started as just a little barbecue cookout and it has spread so much. There's food, there's clothing, medical supplies. It's, it's kind of become a, a little bit of a tent city and a catch-all. Um, after I got done with some of the stuff I had to do downtown, I went ahead and grabbed a bite to eat from them. Really good breakfast burrito. I kind of think I'd easily pay, you know, five, six bucks from a uh, from regular food vendor for, so. <clears throat> uh, some of the background noise you hear, uh, the city is very busy doing cleanup from some of the, the graffiti and stuff from protest actions. And as you can see, this is the uh, Hatfield Federal Courthouse where most of the protest activities from, uh, actually for pretty much the entire month of July have been taking place. Uh, the feds recently put up this new, um, <clears throat> sorry, this new heavy duty fencing that they're anticipating having in place throughout the rest of the year. Oh yeah, yeah, the, Housing is definitely and has been an issue here in Portland. 
Um, I spent some time myself unhoused and I got lucky that I was able to get into housing situations and get into a better position, but I had access to resources that some of these people don't. Uh, as far as the PBOT notices, I have not seen any yet. Um, I've been hoping to, but yeah, it's possible that I just haven't seen the portion of the fence where they put it up. Um, we have confirmed that Commissioner, uh, I think it's you, Daly, did send that cease and desist notice to the GSA, that's uh, General Services Administration, saying that they want the fence taken down and out of the street. Um, and you can see it is definitely interfering with the flow of traffic here. Uh, there is the bike lane that is like completely blocked up, which was one of the issues. Yeah, I've seen uh, Corey Elias was one of the ones that I saw that did, um, had seen a picture of it, but I'm not sure where on the fence it was that he saw it. That Uh, just because there is a little bit of stuff going on, I want to go down and take a little bit of a closer look. Um, it looks like some of the contractors are attempting to do some repairs on a section of the fence that was uh, taken apart last night. Um, a few protesters did come through, and we did see federal agents that came out and had managed to detain two of them. So yeah, it definitely seems like the, uh, it definitely seems like they're going to try to reinforce it more, especially there are more pieces of fence that are sitting here. My gut is telling me that the feds are not going to care about what the city has said in regards to them wanting the fence taken down. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to go ahead and come around the other side here. The traffic lights have been down ever since I got here about 8 o'clock this morning. I'm not entirely sure why because this intersection aside from the, the damaged fence is completely drivable. The, the feds could just leave. Unfortunately, at this point, I think it's become a matter of pride for them. And as you can see, all of the graffiti that's been building up ever since the, the protest started after George Floyd's murder have still been there. Meanwhile, as I'm going through the uh, as I'm going through and looking at the city buildings, I'm seeing that a lot of work is being done to repair, or uh, not so much repair, but to spray paint away the, uh, the graffiti that was done on them. And that's... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely one of the things that is a point of contention between the the feds and the local people is the, the local people are, you know, they're, they're cleaning up the graffiti, they're letting it get back to normal, even though they know that things are likely going to be graffiti again, as opposed to the feds who are leaving all this graffiti here almost as if they want to milk it for the sympathy points with, you know, uh, government supporters on a national level. And yeah, it's, it's entirely possible that, you know, 
federal use of mun munitions could be damaging the <coughs> the uh, lighting system. So yeah, and this is, when I first got into town, I came up from this way. So this is where I've, yeah, I've seen all this stuff before when I first got here. Let me go back around, I can take a look at the other side. Because it does go down a little bit the side of the building. Um, on the south side of the building, so we can definitely take a look at that on the way through. Uh, and also, we have had some recent developments uh, yesterday afternoon into the evening. Uh, the federal court, ironically the very building that is being protested at, uh, issued a restraining order against the federal government telling them that they could not target protesters and legal observers such as from the ACLU and the uh, National Lawyers Guild. Unfortunately, the feds didn't seem to take that very well. Um, at the last count that I know of, they shot at least five press members last night, which seemed to be more than they've done before. Yet the last time I was down here covering, I remember seeing the, uh, when it got night out, I remember seeing the LED lights flickering. And at first we didn't know what the cause was from that. Um, you know, we weren't sure if it was some sort of damage or if somebody tried to set up new systems and broke something or if it was just a natural thing. And we, we still don't know for sure, but yeah, the, the press got hammered last night and this is... You know, while, while nobody should be getting gassed and shot out out here at a protest, and we shouldn't have to be making special privileges for press people, it is still you know, saying something that we have had to go to a court and have a judge say, you know, it's bad to shoot people that are documenting the government. see here you know there the the city or county or whoever is more than happy to spray the graffiti off of the building and, and they've done this numerous times I'm, I'm seeing them working on multiple buildings right now at the same time and yet I hear some sort of compressor running from the feds but I don't think they're making any move to actually clean anything. <laughs> that is one of the ways to look at it, yeah. And anybody who is documenting current events for other people to process if and when they choose is kind of the, the definition of press. Um, and, and that was one of the things that came from the court order that the judge signed was, you know, we're talking about protesters and press are using the First Amendment in two different ways. The protesters are using the First Amendment to assemble to petition the government to address grievances. Meanwhile, the press is using the First Amendment to access the public space to document what the government's response is. So, yeah, I'm, I'm able to see down the side of the building I wasn't able to before, and there are no 
uh, Peabot signs up on here that I can see anywhere. So it seems like somebody took them down. Can't say if it was feds or a protester. Um, I, I feel like you know, that, that could be something that I could see the the feds doing just to spite the, the city. A uh, little unusual for me to see all the doors open with the police department right now. Every time I'm down here at night, they have everything locked up tight. You know, almost high security. Uh, police bureau buildings open. <laughs> um, okay. And that's... Yeah, I'm always seeing like an armed guard there whenever I come through at night. Both of the garages are open. If it wasn't for the boarded up windows, things would look almost normal. They actually, you can do complaints online now. Um, I've already done two. Uh, one of them was related to an event that happened to me back on July 4th uh, when we had the first restraining order put out. Um, somebody either from the city or the county or whoever was working that night refused to let me into an area that I was supposed to be able to. Um, and I finally got around, I had video of it because I was live streaming at the time. And I finally went and I filed a complaint uh, because the Independent Review Board has said that we don't have to have a name or it normally would be a badge number. In this, in this case right now, it's a BHR number. Um, so, you know, I've, I've done a complaint on that. Also, um, there was an uh, issue that was brought to light about uh, Daryl Turner. He's the uh, president of the police union. For a while, his personal Facebook was apparently in, was in violation, as far as we can tell, of police policy with having his badge number up and everything. Um, you know, so I went ahead and, and I filed a report on that. I don't expect a whole lot to come of it, but... Yeah, and that's, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do out here as the press is, you know, not only, you know, flexing our rights, but educating everybody else about their rights, too. Like, it wasn't until I sat in on a community uh, review commission meeting when I even found out that, no, we don't have to have names and badge numbers to file a complaint. Which, with the problems that we've been having with police obscuring their badge numbers, has made it very difficult to identify who is abusing the rights of protesters. So, just slipping over this way for a minute. This is the other federal building that the feds are particularly interested in protecting. Um, last time I was recording last Friday, so a week ago, uh, they actually came out of here when the parks were all fenced up and they were unloading tons of munitions into the crowd. And I'll, believe me, those things get hot as hell. Um, there was one that I was trying to recover. It took a good 10 minutes until I could even barely touch it through gloved hands. It was just that hot. Um, so yeah, there's, there's definitely a contingent of you know, uniformed marshals and types in this building. They also have dark. I also have Terry Strunk Plaza across the road here, which is also federal property. So they, they get a little antsy about that. Um, 
Apparently the settler statue that's been here was just recently taken down. Oh, get a little bit of gas. <coughs> oh, sorry. There is just enough tear gas left in the air when I'm in the park blocks. Um, I'm not as accustomed to it as some of these other people. So... But yeah, apparently they took the benches out uh, and the statue either yesterday or the day before. Uh, the remnants of the elk statue are taken down right now. I guess they've written off the whole base. Uh, yeah, they've... <sighs> I used to be in the military and the, the things that I have seen the feds doing to peaceful or unarmed and helpless protesters. I would like to think that if they were military people, they would have been up for a court martial, if not like war crimes charges. Yeah. So we have the, the county side of the Justice Center. Um, from what I understand, this side of the building is actually basically closed right now. Uh, there are some... Uh, there are still court cases happening in the Justice Center, but they're all being done uh, by telephone or video conference. So they're actually not really bringing the public in there right now. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, when the elk statue came down, it was that was something that definitely upset the uh, the protesters. The elk statue is kind of a uh, a community centralization. And when that came down, it, it stung. And there's been effigies to replace the elk. There's been an inflatable elk that's shown up from time to time. Well, I'll be. So at the courthouse, they are actually using a pressure washer. I'm not, I'm not sure that they're actually trying to clean off the graffiti. Um, it almost looks like they're trying to clean off the chalk and stuff off of the concrete, you know, off the, the ground. But still ignoring, or at least not very interested in dealing with the graffiti itself. And for those who, you know, may not have caught, when acting DHS... Uh, Secretary Chad Wolf came into Portland to talk about how the federal agents were so needed here and how great of a job they were doing. Almost all of the reasons that they used as justification for them being here was graffiti. And I don't know the federal statutes on it, but when it comes to cities uh, or state law, uh, graffiti is only a violation. It's on par with a speeding ticket. It's not a misdemeanor. It's not a felony. The penalty for graffiti is a fine and maybe community service. So, you know, I'm of the opinion that responding to graffiti with shooting people in the head with rubber bullets is definitely not proportional use of force. And that's, that's a lot of the kind of stuff that we have here. Yes, there are people that shoot fireworks at the courthouse. But it's usually like Roman candles. And that's the kind of stuff that drunk college kids will shoot at each other for fun. I mean, that, 
that was the kind of thing that was literally on Jackass. Yeah, so... Uh, that's not really going to do anything to a building. It's not going to do anything to riot cops in, in full riot gear. But I've seen pictures of the damage that the flashbangs that the feds are able to do. I've, I've seen them start fires in the parks here. Yeah, it, I have been trying for weeks to figure out some way to justify the force that's been used on the protesters and all I can come up with is it's not a judicial function, it's retribution. They, they want an excuse to beat up protesters. That's the only thing I can think of. <clears throat> so, all that being said, um, I wasn't really planning on doing a whole lot of video right now. There is some stuff later on that I'm going to be recording uh, at about noon Pacific time. There's supposed to be a protest going on uh, from a bunch of lawyers that are going to be down here protesting at the courthouse. And I've been asked to cover that, so I'll definitely be down here for that. Uh, there might be some other interviews or stuff to look at too, but I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and drop off for a little while. Uh, but definitely keep an eye on this channel. Um, and, you know, if, if you want to you know, throw other support my way, we do have uh, Cash App and Venmo. They're both Raindrop Works PDX. Uh, there's also still, uh, it hasn't been as much of an issue lately, but in Portland we do have uh, bail bond programs to help get people that are detained by the local police out of county jail. Uh, I definitely recommend supporting you know, uh, Black Lives Matter businesses and programs out in the communities. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for a little bit. This is Heather Van Wild with Raindrop Works. Have a great day, uh, be safe, and keep fighting. <laughs>